Hey, seventh graders. Today's lesson is 1.2 and 1.4 matter and energy, and your learning targets are I can explain the process of photosynthesis. So we're going to use a couple different methods to kind of figure out what is going on in photosynthesis, what does a plant need for photosynthesis, um, in an ecosystem who's responsible for doing photosynthesis, and how does it help the other organisms. All right, so first thing you guys need to do is open up your OneNote and add key concepts one and two to your key concepts page. So carbon is a part of carbon dioxide, which is abiotic matter. And you guys saw this on the last unit where you guys were doing the sim and you guys were kind of watching where energy storage molecules were going. And I referenced the little chocolate chip cookie looking uh, energy storage molecules. And the little black dots we talked about a couple times in there is that carbon. So when we also looked, there was a little gray diamonds that had the little black dot as well. That was also carbon. So again, carbon is part of carbon dioxide, which is abiotic matter. Carbon is also part of ESMs, which are biotic matter. So remember, if you guys are taking biology, you guys are studying life. So when you guys hear biotic matter, that bio means life. So we're talking matter that's part of a living thing. Okay, versus abiotic means non-living. So we're talking about carbon dioxide being part of something that's non-living. So if it's floating around in the air, the air is obviously non-living. All right, second key concept. During the process of photosynthesis, producers make ESMs using carbon from carbon dioxide and energy from sunlight. This moves carbon from abiotic matter to biotic matter. Okay, and then you guys have a lot of vocab to add to your notebook today. So you guys have producer, an organism that can make its own energy storage molecules, such as glucose. Consumer, an organism that needs to eat in order to get energy storage molecules. So we learned that last unit when we talked about consumer populations. Ecosystem, all the living and non-living things interacting in a particular area. Again, that was from the last unit as well. Biotic matter, matter that makes up the living and dead organisms in the ecosystem, so basically the once living organisms. Abiotic matter, matter that makes up non-living parts of the ecosystem, such as the air, water, and rocks. Carbon dioxide, a molecule made of carbon and oxygen atoms. And finally, photosynthesis, the process by which plants and other producers use energy from sunlight to change carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and glucose. All right, so once you guys have those added, we can go ahead and move on to our activity two. You guys have two videos that you guys need to watch, so you need to right click them. The first one is called Living in a Biosphere. Um, and it's about four minutes long, and it talks about uh, a science project that was completed back in the early 90s where they built this giant biosphere and had all these ecosystems and their whole goal was kind of to set the precedent of if we were to move to Mars or the moon could we sustain their living in a in a biosphere set up on a different planet okay so watch that first one the second one is a TED talk it's about 15 minutes long um, but you guys get a lot of really cool fun information um, the lady who does this TED one of the scientists, excuse me, one of the scientists that was actually in the biosphere, okay? So it's pretty cool listening to her talk about, like, how they had to make their own food, like, what it meant if they wanted to have a pizza, okay? They couldn't just have it delivered, so they kind of go into detail about, you know, how they had to make their food in order to eat something as simple to us every day as a pizza, Okay? All right, so once you guys have done, uh, you guys can pause this video, watch those videos, and then when you guys are ready, come back in and we will move on to activity three, our simulation. All right, moving into our sim, you guys are gonna be observing photosynthesis close up. So you guys are gonna be using the sim, observing what happens in the sim, and then comparing that to some diagrams that we've seen already and some that might be a little new to you. So the sim and the diagram from the article are both types of models to help you understand more about the process of photosynthesis. Compare the close-up view from the sim, so we'll press view cell, and the diagram below to help you gather more evidence about the process of photosynthesis and where the energy storage molecules come from. So obviously, um, you guys will be working by yourself. You won't be having a partner on this. So you guys can kind of just see the two different roles that you guys will need to complete on your own. So you'll need to open the sim and run it with its default settings. And then we'll look at a model of photosynthesis by clicking view cell in the box labeled producer. So let's go ahead, right click our sim link right here. Pull up our sim for us. I already have one open here. And we're gonna go ahead and just hit play on our simulation. 
when it loads for me. Um, and while we're waiting for that, we'll go ahead and look at what partner two's job or what your second part of this is going to be. So keep this screen open so you can see the photosynthesis diagram and the following questions. So this is the diagram we're referring to here. So you guys saw this in one of the earlier articles we did in this unit. I believe it was sunlight and life. So you guys can kind of see we've got carbon dioxide, water, energy. Here's some chloroplast and a leaf. And then our out arrows are telling us these are our products meaning that's what's produced in this whole process of photosynthesis. We've got oxygen, glucose, and then you guys can kind of follow this carbon atom and read the little caption here. All right, so let's see if our sim is loaded. All right, so you guys will hit play, and then you guys will go and you will view cell right here with our producers. So you guys can kind of see this little trapezoid-looking guy is water, little circle is oxygen, um, little carbon, uh, excuse me, a little carbon dioxide is the little gray triangle, or excuse me, di diamond, and then the little chocolate chip cooking thing is the energy storage molecules. So you guys can kind of just focus in on the chloroplasts for this side. We'll look at where the mitochondria are coming into play later. So let's just focus in on photosynthesis here by looking at the chloroplast. Okay. All right, so back to our assignment. So you guys will compare what you guys note in the sim with what you guys note in this diagram, and then you'll answer these four questions. How are these models similar? And how are these models different? Okay, and then finally, what do these models show about where energy storage molecules come from? So where do energy storage molecules come from? And which organisms in an ecosystem produce energy storage molecules? So if you kind of answer this first, then you guys can be a little bit more specific about where the energy storage molecules come from. Okay, finally, last little part, you guys will examine this little part, which you guys have already written a caption on, okay? And you guys can see that this is the same cell, but at two different time periods, okay? So you guys can see that they obviously have different contents inside of their little chloroplast. So what you guys are gonna do on this part to wrap up activity three is you guys have a little word blank bank over here that you can click and drag. So photosynthesis is done by, so who does photosynthesis? In this case, it's producers. So you guys will click and drag producers over into that blank. Okay, and then obviously you're gonna read through the rest of this um, and finish identifying which vocab word goes in which blank. Okay, finally, activity four, you guys have another video to watch called Photosynthesis in Elodia. It talks about an experiment using an aquatic plant called Elodia and how we can use that Elodia to study photosynthesis by changing certain variables. So in the experiment, what factors affected the number of energy storage molecules that the Elodia plant can make? So it may be um, increasing the number of ESMs or decreasing the number of ESMs, what different things did they change to change the number of ESMs? Finally, your wrap up for the day. Any questions, circle yes or no. If you have any questions, please type them below. But as usual, if you are not understanding what you are doing, please let me know. And then finally, four, three, two, one, how do you think you did? Great job, you guys. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.